Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the channel again. I hope you guys are doing well. Hope you guys are also ready to learn a little bit more about iOS development by building out the third part of our YouTube app series. So uh, first things first, um, if you haven't watched the episode one and two of this YouTube series, please go ahead and follow the links uh, in the description below and get caught up with some of the material that we've been working on so far. Okay, having said that, let's go ahead and take a look at what we wanna make uh, for today's video. Uh, it's actually really exciting because uh, it's one of the very first custom components, I would call it, that we're gonna write out programmatically. So let's look at the app right here and let's go to Photoshop. And so the progress that we've made so far has been pretty dramatic. We've changed the app from this blank collection view, laid it out, uh, put some assets inside of our cells, and now we're finally ready to take a look at this custom uh, menu bar is what I'm calling it at the very top under, <laughs> underneath the navigation bar that we built in the last video. So before we start writing out some code, uh, let's take a look at what is this custom menu bar. Um, Basically, uh, well, if you've taken a look at some uh, iOS components uh, from UIKit, your first reaction might be to uh, build this component out using a UI segmented control. But I find that component pretty difficult to work with. And some of the things that, um, for example, uh, the tint color, the background color, the little uh, border around the second controller, they're all very, very difficult to customize. And so the idea uh, behind this component that I'm gonna, I'm going to build is going to be using a UI collection view that has a horizontal layout with all the buttons uh, kind of from left to right. So basically we're building out our own uh, segmented control that comes with a highlighted state, a non-highlighted state, and also a selected state, which is this white uh, icon that we see here. All right, so let me just shrink this back down. Let's see, okay, okay. <clears throat> All right, now we can actually go back into Xcode, and I'm gonna run this right now just to make sure we are at the right location in code. So here we are, we, we have a uh, navigation bar up top that's red. And now we want to actually add in this custom uh, navigation bar that does that. Or basically it's a menu bar is what I'm going to be calling it. And I'm going to stick with that naming convention for now. So let's uh, take a look at the app that we have. And here's what we want to do. I'm going to go into this file or this view group and I'm gonna create a new file. I'm gonna call it, uh, click the Swift file, call it menu bar and hit create. And instead of foundation, let's import UI kit, which allows us to use uh, things like UI view. And basically I'm gonna create a new class called menu bar and subclass it as a UI view. And in here, <coughs> I need to, override this uh, frame initializer. So I actually need to override it like that and call a super init frame and use this frame parameter that is passed into this initializer. And now I'm going to get rid of this compiler error by just following what it says right there, double clicking. And now we have a place to kind of start coding. Now what I'm do is I'm going to first set the background color equal this UI blue color just for now and I'm going to add it into this home controller view. Now the way to add it is to actually add it inside of this view right here. And so I'm going to create this setup menu bar method at the bottom. So func setup menu bar like this. And I'm actually going to mark it as private because no other uh, class uh, should actually have access to this setup function. It's just here to conveniently set up the menu bar. And now I want to set up this menu bar view like this. So let's call menu bar, uh, menu bar like that. <clears throat> so I'm gonna build and we'll get this failure. So now 
we want to create this menu bar in code, I'm going to say let mb equals menu bar and paren paren, return this mb menu bar. And then here we go. We have this menu bar correctly set up now. Inside of setup uh, menu bar, we'll just say view, add subview, menu bar right there. And now we need to actually create some constraints for this menu bar. Otherwise, it's not going to show up like what we're going to see right now. Okay, we don't see the blue menu bar. And I'm going to say view, add constraints with format like that. And I am going to <clears throat> add in a horizontal constraint like this, so V0 right here. And views will be menu bar. And let me just add in the vertical constraints as well, so V. And V will be uh, V0. And it will be 50 pixels tall like that. And this will also be menu bar. I'm going to run this right now and show you exactly what these two constraints do. Basically, we have this uh, horizontal left edge to right edge uh, symbolized by these pipes. And then we have 50 pixels in the vertical axis right there. So pretty good. Now, let's change this blue to the actual red color. And you'll see uh, something a little funny about what is underneath the nav bar. So I'm going to go to app delegate and grab the actual red color for this uh, UI navigation bar appearance bar tint color. I'm going to copy that entire bit, go to menu bar. I'm going to set that right there. I'm going to run this application now. <clears throat> and the blue color is going to change to the red color that we want. However, you see this gray or black line underneath the nav bar, basically in between these two views. And so the first time I saw it, that was a little strange as well. And basically the nav bar comes with this like little shadow line underneath the nav bar. And the idea is to actually get rid of the black line. And we do that by saying UI navigation bar inside of an app delegate. We say appearance, uh, shadow, image equals UI image like that. It's a little strange, actually doesn't show up in code completion, but it still works nonetheless. Uh, the next thing we have to set is, uh, let's see, set back around, let's see, set back around image to something. So we say UI image again, and then here we say four bar metrics, and this will, see, <coughs> this will say default like that. And so let me just comment that this, uh, or comment here saying, uh, da -da -da, let it run first, and the bar is gone. So get rid of black bar underneath nav bar. So that looks okay. And now we're ready to actually implement some of these buttons inside of our menu bar. Pretty good. I hope you guys are following along nicely. I'm trying to aim for uh, perhaps under 20 minutes today, but we'll see if I can make that target. Anyhow, let's see what we want to do here. So going back to menu bar, I want to create a collection view that will actually contain all of the buttons and the selected states and the highlighted states for each one of those interactions on top of those buttons. And I'm gonna do that by creating a collection view right here. So light collection view, be of type collection view, like that, equals this uh, block right here. And in here, I'm going to say let CV equals UI collection view, like that, let's see. And I'm gonna use this last constructor here, and for frame, I'm gonna hit zero, and this uh, layout here, I'm gonna call it layout, like that. And on top, I'm gonna create this layout by creating a collection view uh, flow layout right there. And now I can just return this collection view right here and then execute this entire block and setting this collection view to whatever's inside there. And now I'm ready to add sub view, this collection view I just created. And I'm going to add uh, constraints with format again. I'm going to create this horizontal constraints. Uh, or, yeah, horizontal constraints. It's actually plural because it contains more than one constraint inside of this whole call. Uh, don't worry so much about that. 
but that's just what we have to do. And I'm going to create a top edge to bottom edge constraint for the collection view as well. And I'm going to hit run. You're going to see that the red bar um, that we just created is going to turn into this black bar. And the reason is because collection view is defaulted to a black background color. That means we have to actually change the collection view background color instead, like, uh, let's see, like that. And <clears throat> that's pretty good. So I'm going to actually clean this up and include all that code in here instead. Call that CV. Uh, run that one more time, and we should be good to go. So now we have this collection view inside of this red nav bar. You can't really see it so much, but trust me, it is there indeed. And uh, one thing I wanted to mention about what I just did uh, now uh, was include all the custom customization of the collection view inside of this block, which means that I don't have to worry about what happens after uh, initialization of the actual view. All the customization goes in here and it's nice and compact. Um, you're not really supposed to modify this bit a whole lot. Keeps your code clean as well. Hopefully you guys will follow the same type of coding practice that uh, good programmers have and adhere to. Okay, moving along, we want to add some views inside of this collection view. In other words, we want these four buttons inside of each one of these cells inside of the collection view. So first, we actually need to have some cells to populate. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to say cv.datasource equals self, and cv.delegate also equals self like that. But we're not able to set data source to self because we actually need to first conform to UI collection view data source, UI collection view uh, delegate right there. And while we're at it, I'm going to also conform to UI collection view delegate flow layout, just so we can specify some sizes a little bit later. Now we have these errors here because we haven't actually um, implemented this uh, these couple of methods. First is number of items in section. And we know we have four buttons inside of this collection view, so we have return value of four. And the second method we need to implement is this uh, cell for item at index path. And then we need to return a certain cell in here. So let's see. Okay, we still have this error here. And it's a little weird. I don't want to go into too much detail on why this error is here, but to fix it, we need to say lazy var, and then everything is nice and no longer complaining about your uh, let collection view code. So anyhow, uh, perhaps if you have a question about that, please leave a comment down below. Um, anyhow, let's now decide what cell to return inside of this uh, collection view here. Okay, and essentially here's how a collection view works. And you guys probably already know this from the very first video. Basically, we have to register a cell with some kind of cell ID. And I'm gonna create the cell ID as a string up here. And then we have to actually do this. We have to say uh, collection view register class like this. And then for the cell class, I'm going to register a collection view cell right there. And we need to add the self to get the class of that uh, item, object, yeah, something like that. And we have to use cell ID uh, to complete the register process. And now we can actually dequeue this cell by saying let uh, cell equals collection view, dequeue cell. And this will be cell ID, index path, you know, usual good stuff, and return the cell right now. Now, if I were to run this code right now, you won't be able to see the cell because cells have a uh, default UI clear color, transparent, uh, in other words, and you won't, be able to, you won't be able to see it. So I'm gonna set this uh, cell that we're getting to a color of blue. This way, you'll believe me when I say I've correctly returned uh, some cells inside of my collection view. And that's looking 
quite good. Now, all we need to do, or there's a couple of things that we need to do, and the first of which is to determine the size of each one of these cells here. And basically, the size will be a fourth of the entire view's width. And to specify the size, we say size for item, right there. Um, and we need to return a CG size make of, uh, so instead of saying view frame width, we just say frame, because we're inside of this entire view here. And we'll say frame width uh, divided by four, like that. And then this will just be frame height to get the entire height of the frame. And our running that will get the cells to be the correct size. However, we get this weird effect where we have some spacing in between that pushes the last cell down below. And to reduce that spacing, we'll say uh, minimum enter item uh, spacing for a section index. We'll just turn zero and run this application again. I know it's quite a mouthful, but essentially this means uh, spacing between each cell will be reduced to absolute zero and we get all of these cells inside of here. So you can't see the, let me see if I can actually show what's in here. So you can see that there's one cell here and there's, there's another cell here, here, and here. And now we are somewhat on a, a good uh, path to completing this menu bar. Okay. Oh, that's a lot of code. And yeah, time is running long, but we'll see how much more we can do. All right. Now, notice how I'm dragging this collection view down here, and you see how it's actually beneath the menu bar. And to fix that, we go back to Home Controller to modify this collection view here by saying collection view uh, content inset equals UI edge inset make and the top will be 50 because it's uh let's see the menu bar is 50 pixels tall and uh, we just push the collection view 50 pixels down and now we have this uh, collection view properly aligned beneath the bar and so let me just show you another problem that we see You'll notice that the collection view, scroll view, kind of goes underneath the menu bar. So we have to align this. Let's see, I'm going to copy that. We have to change the scroll insets like that to be the same thing. And run this guy and show you that the scroll is now properly adjusted to lie beneath uh, the menu bar like that. So, bam, looks perfect. Shrink this guy, bring it back up here. Now we're ready to go back to the menu bar and implement the actual um, icons for some cells. Okay, now next question is how do I actually get these images inside of these cells? Well, the easiest way is to actually uh, register a different cell uh, for the cell ID and return a custom cell called, uh, let's see, menu cell. Not gonna bite me in the next video. Let's see, menu cell, okay. We'll just call it menu cell for now and hopefully it doesn't hurt me later on. So see class menu cell and this will be a, a UI collection view cell. And we're gonna have to do some override init frame business and init Let's see, call super init frame. And let's see if I want to go through all this. Okay, definitely do. And so, okay, so now everything works, right? And I can use this setup views thing again here and call func setup views. And you know, we can start setting up views here. But if you remember from our very first video, uh, let's see, when we created the video cell, we did the exact same thing where we overrode, overrode? Yeah, overrode in it with frame and had this setup views thing. I'm gonna command click here, brings me down here. 
have all this setup view uh, code that does a lot of view setup work and we have the same required it. So because we are good programmers, I don't want to uh, keep on duplicating or writing this code out very redundantly. And basically I'm going to create this kind of super class is what we call it. And the super class is this base class called base cell, which is a collection view cell. And I'm going to cut this code out here, paste that down here. And I'm gonna cut this code here as well. And so I'm gonna paste that down there. And I'm gonna create this set of views inside of this uh, super class or this base class. And I'm gonna copy this base cell, paste that in there. So now this cell is a subclass of this base cell. And let's see, now we need to fix this so that it overrides uh, the set of views method. And now it no longer contains this init stuff. And I can easily just create this brand new cell without uh, overriding these init methods. In other words, if I go back to menu bar and I get rid of all this stuff here that I don't really want to keep on duplicating, I can just uh, overwrite set of views if I first subclass this as base cell and see set up views and build first views right there and enter. And now I'm just going to call super perhaps set up views. Um, calling this doesn't really matter so much, but we're now able to set up this entire cell without all that unnecessary init business that really gets in the way and complicates your code unnecessarily. Okay, now that we have this cell, what do we want to do? All right, what do we want to do? Well, basically here's what we want to do first. So I'm gonna set this background color equal to this UI color dot yellow color down there. And I'm gonna remove this blue color down there. And now I'm gonna run to verify that my cells are indeed showing up inside of the collection view. So it's all yellow, which is a good sign that this cell is actually working. Now, going back to this uh, diagram here, we want to just simply add a image view inside of each one of these cells. So I'm gonna go here and say, let image view equals, uh, is a type of image view equal this block here. And we'll say IV for image view right here and return this IV here. And for now, I'm gonna say IV.image equals your image name something here. So I'm gonna get that image into my assets catalog right now. So I'm gonna assets right here. And I'm gonna drag in these four icons. Basically, it is the uh, menu bar icons, or they are the menu, bo uh, menu bar icons. And I am going to just first set the image to home. And now I can get rid of this uh, yellow color, unnecessary line of code. I'm gonna say add sub view, Let's see, scroll down a little bit, and add this image view inside. And I'm gonna say add constraints uh, with format. And I'm going to simply use this bracket here, v0. And I'm gonna say, uh, 20, say 28 for the uh, width. Uh, here's image view. And I'm going to uh, copy and paste and add in the vertical constraints for 28 as well. And running the, this application now, we have the assets uh, for these uh, image views. And you'll see that the home is kind of oriented at the very top left zero zero origin of the cell. And we would need to bring it to the middle of uh, each one of these cells. So to do so, <clears throat> We need to say add constraint, just add one constraint right here. Comes the NS layout constraint like that. And item, and let's see, item is image view. Attribute is, let's see, uh, center X. <laughs> let's get rid of that right there. And uh, this will be equal to item will be self. And this will be center X again, one, zero. And copy this guy right there and get rid of the X, center X, and center Y. Okay. 
uh, I think we need one more print right there and one more print right there. I'm gonna run this guy now to show you how this has basically centered the home icon to the very center of the uh, the cell. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Okay. Okay. Now the next thing we want to do is to actually set each one of these images correctly uh, based on the, uh, I guess the row index of the cell. And that's pretty easy if you just set up an array up here inside our menu bar. I would say image names equals uh, something. So first one is home, second one is this trending image, and the third one is this subscriptions image, and the fourth one is this account image right here. So I'm gonna open up this assets catalog to show you what I'm talking about. So account, home, subscriptions, and trending, uh, all that good stuff. So I need to put this in quotes. And so here is what we are going to do. <clears throat> so this menu cell is uh, the cell that we're dequeuing from this collection view. So I can downcast that as a menu cell. And now I can access the image view inside of it and set the image to uh, image names and so we need to get the actual index path item like that and run the application now it's going to fail and let's see image names string okay right looks like I was a little hasty with creating this image and run that okay build successful I'm gonna launch it just a little bit and there we go so now we have the images inside of our cell. Okay, now the next thing we want to do, uh, it's actually pretty fun, I think. <laughs> next thing is to actually set the image, uh, what we call the tint color on the image review. And we set that to this dark, uh, kind of darkish red color. And so let me just take a look here. Okay. And we need to set the tint color like this. Let's see. <clears throat> Basically, if we go back to menu cell, we set the tint color um, by first uh, saying this. So we can actually say set uh, tint color equals, uh, I'm gonna call it UI color, and have this RGB value on the other screen just to save us some time here. Right there, I'm gonna run that, and hopefully it's not going to work, um, but we'll see what happens. Okay, you see how it is still white? And the reason is because we need to actually change this uh, image to this image with rendering mode, and this will say always template, I think. Yeah, I'm gonna run that, and I don't think the color is going to change because we're actually resetting the image up here. So I'm going to say image with rendering, always template. And I'm going to then say cell dot tin color equals, uh, let's see. I'm going to copy this right here and take this tin color, set that there. I'm going to run that guy one more time to see our tint color taking into effect right there. So I'm going to go there, and you notice how the tint color matches up now, but we're missing the uh, selected state for the cell. Basically, the white is the selected and highlighted state of the cell. And now you might be wondering, well, how do I know how to do that? And so here's the cool part about UI collection views. Uh, cells are actually selectable inside of collection views, and cells are very easily highlighted um, by changing the background color of the uh, cell. We're actually changing the image view color. And I'm going to do that by just typing out here. So I'm going to say var uh, override var highlighted like this. You see that bool right there. And I'm going to say did set. And essentially, anytime a cell is selected, we 
execute this bit of code. So I'm going to make that really obvious by saying print one, two, three. And upon selection of each one of these, uh, these cells here, we get this print statement down here, one, two, three, one, two, three. And yeah, so basically I want to actually change the tint color inside of this bit here. Okay. So every time I select or highlight one of those cells, I want to say image view dot tint color equals, well, if it's highlighted like this, I can say, uh, let's see, UI color, white color. Uh, otherwise we do this dark red tint color. And this is uh, what we call a ternary operator where uh, it's a short, it's kind of a short cut for writing an if else statement. And uh, just take a look at it and uh, it'll make sense to you after a while. So every time I highlight it, uh, it becomes white because highlighted is true. And we execute this code right here and we just set the color to white like that. And if I copy and paste this entire thing like this uh, and change this to selected like that, because it also has a selected value. I'm going to paste the selected values in there and there. And now we have a way to select the cells like this. And so I'm going to select it. You notice how the white color stays highlighted white. Okay, it's pretty good. I'm going to run this guy one final time and show you the last bug we need to fix. And that bug is what happens when you first launch the app and you don't get a selected state for the menu bar. And uh, I guess in other words, we want to have the home button selected for us every time we launch the application um, as a brand new app. And so you might be thinking, well, if we're inside of this self or item index path, we might be able to figure out to highlight this guy or to do something weird, <laughs> I guess, maybe. Um, and uh, so the easiest way to actually pre-select a cell is to call uh, this method here. So inside of init uh, frame, we can say collection view, uh, select item at index path. And I'm going to create this let selected index path up here equals NS index path. I'm going to use this for item zero zero, and this will be selected index path. Animated will be false because we don't care so much. And scroll position is net. So I'm run this one time. Uh, I don't think it actually works though. And we get, oh, well, actually does work. So there we go. <laughs> A little surprised by that because usually, usually it does not work, but you see how the home button is selected right there. And uh, this essentially keeps the initialization process kind of inside of the init method and uh, keeps this self or item index path code clean as well. So there's no uh, one off case where we decide to highlight the cell to be white. Um, I've seen a lot of code that's quite un, uh, un, unsightly, is that a word? And it's not exactly how I would like to lay out my code. I just like to keep it clean. There's only two lines of code here, perhaps three. And nothing too fancy is going on either. So let me just go back to the diagram here. I think we're missing these uh, two buttons on the top right, but seeing it as how I am running over time again. I'm just going to wrap up the video right here. I'm going to bring this to the very center. Uh, zoom in a little bit. It looks pretty good. I don't think we are missing a whole lot. And that kind of uh, ends our video for today. Let's go back to our diagram here. And for the next video, we want to actually perhaps implement these two buttons over here. And there's still this horizontal bar that exists underneath each one of these cells. And it actually gets, uh, uh, what's the correct word? 
um, as you drag this left and right, this bar actually moves left and right. So let me see if I can show you with the semi-completed app. You see it goes left and right like that. And then it actually changes the title for the nav bar as well. So a lot of fancy stuff. Uh, definitely going to try to show you whoa, what happened there. All right, all of the images are gone. Uh, looks like there's some kind of bug of, of sorts. And uh, so going back to this nav bar, I'm gonna try to perhaps implement the nav, uh, this horizontal bar. Um, and also we want to get into the integration of a REST API that will help us populate our home feed with actual uh, videos that you are interested in watching. And that's going to use a REST API. And I'm gonna show you guys how to parse that JSON from that REST API as, as well. All right, that about wraps it up. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to hit that like button like usual. And subscribe if you want to get further notifications about the uh, next upcoming uh, episodes episodes in this series. Um, I know a lot of you guys are uh, not seeing the code, uh, completed source code inside of the description below. Whoa. And so basically there's a link down there if you want to download the whole code sample, it's all up on my website on uh, letsbuildthatapp.com. And there's a link down below. You can take a look at all the code and you get the image assets uh, as well. So that's gonna help you kind of look at uh, the exact uh, way that I'm programming this to verify if you are doing it correctly or not. So hopefully you guys can click on that link. Uh, should be helpful for some of you guys that uh, need that little extra bit of help. All right, I uh, hope you guys enjoy and uh, have a good day. Bye-bye.